This is me, after running and climbing in the Norwegian mountains for more than 10 hours. I'm as beaten down as I have ever been, and I'm only halfway through with this extreme 100km mountain ultra marathon. I wanted to push my limits and challenge myself in an extreme way, but entering this race, I had no idea what I signed up for. Me and Elin are spending the last uh, couple of days before the ultra marathon race here in beautiful Halfjell in uh, Norway. Now it's only two days until the race and uh, time is going quite <laughs> slowly here because uh, I can't do that much training because of course I want to taper and uh, get myself uh, rested up and ready for the race. And uh, there's not so much else to do here either. So I thought I would talk a bit <laughs> to you and to the camera a bit about my pre-race uh, thoughts before uh, heading out to this extreme 100km ultra mountain marathon. And uh, to be honest I'm really nervous and uh, a bit afraid because I feel so underprepared. And that's mainly because the last month hasn't gone at all as I wanted it to do because I got this bad hip injury so I couldn't run for a whole week I only did like really short morning runs and then I have been able to start running but it's only now the last couple of runs that I have started to feel that okay my body is starting to feel okay but I have not gotten all the really long runs in that I wanted to do so that makes me <laughs> really afraid and uh, nervous about the outcome. What I'm most afraid of is that I'm going to hurt myself or get a bad injury that uh, puts me out of what I love to do the most, which is running. And that would just feel so stupid. But uh, I, I want to see this thing through and see if, if I can do this thing. It's uh, something so much more challenging uh, physical than anything I've tried before. And this 100 km course is just extreme. It's so steep, it has something like 7,500 height meters gained during the course, and uh, so many steep and technical trails. But I guess that I'm underprepared and uh, not feeling completely ready, and not have uh, like really got them to test myself to see if this thing will be possible for me. It's also something good. If I can embrace it, it's also what makes this an adventure because the outcome here is really uncertain and that's what makes a great adventure that you don't know what's going to happen and you don't know how you will feel and you don't know what you will get to experience and uh, that's the biggest thing why I want to do this I want to do to experience a really cool adventure in the amazing nature here in Norway so uh, I guess I will just try to embrace that and uh, get ready We're finally on our way to Stranda and uh, Elin is driving, who's going to help me survive this race hopefully. <laughs> Are you ready? I'm ready. I'm very ready to live vicariously through you guys. <laughs> That's nice. And we have Oscar in the back who's running the 50k, the longest yep. race you have run. Uh, by far. <laughs> you ready? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yeah, I think Oscar is more prepared for 50k than I am for 100k at least. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what? Glad <Clans> still. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Det var det. Now we're just on the other side of the fjord from where the race will start tomorrow. So this will be the venue for tomorrow's insane run. So 
So we made it to Stranda and now I'm just doing my final preparations, looking over the course a bit here. Otherwise it's pretty much just uh, sitting and waiting now for the start to come. The start will go uh, in the middle of the night tonight at 2 o'clock, so I will try to get a couple of hours of sleep before that. But we will see how much I will be able to sleep, because all right now I'm pretty nervous and excited for what to come. But yeah, I'm looking forward a lot to embark on this uh, adventure. Twenty minutes to go until the race will start, and it feels so <laughs> surreal walking in this little Norwegian town with uh, the dark mountains surrounding me in the middle of the night there towards the start of this uh, like crazy adventure. But yeah, I'm so glad to soon get to start this thing. I had promised myself to start off slowly, but a combination of nerves and me being a competitive person made me push pretty hard towards the first summit. I think my mind was stressed of the long day ahead and just told the legs to start taking off the kilometers as fast as possible. I came into this having no thoughts about wrestles, but running up that first mountain in a third position felt really good. Although, I in the back of my mind knew that this sort of effort was not going to be sustainable for that long. Oh, it feels so good to finally be on my way on this epic adventure. And uh, most probably I started way too hard and I'm just trying to settle in into a good rhythm. And uh, now I'm by myself here and that feels pretty nice actually to just find my own rhythm here. The first 20 km of the route was tough, steep and some parts running completely off trail. Little did I know that this was actually the easiest part of the whole course. As the sun started to rise over the fjord and the magnificent mountains behind me, I continued pushing hard. I don't really understand why I didn't slow down a bit, knowing what to come. I guess it in some way made it feel easier about everything that was left that I at least was working hard to get closer to that finish line. This place is just so sick and to get to run here super early in the morning while sunrise. Uh. What? <laughs> We're climbing up there. Shit. <laughs> uh. uh. This climb was so tough. I'm approaching the first big uh, summit and it's just so beautiful here. You get to watch the sunrise behind me. But today is going to be a tough day because this is more of a climbing race so far than a running race. By 27 kilometers, I was in third place and actually feeling quite okay. But that changed quickly as we started to go down to the first aid station. A couple of guys passed me and my legs were just dead. I didn't have any injury problems to complain about, I was just simply already super tired. It's so far to go and I'm already so tired. 
but I mean running five hours in extreme terrain in the mountains that is tough so it's not that strange that I, I am tired but but it's so far to go so my mind is having a trouble to cope with <laughs> how far it is and uh, yeah I guess I just need to take uh, one step at a time now and I'm looking forward a lot to seeing Elin pretty soon when I'm done with this downhill. I think I went out way too hard but on the other hand I think I would have been just as tired here if I would have gotten here one hour later so yeah, <laughs> I don't know probably. what's the best to do. This downhill start killing my legs. This is probably the most brutal climb I've ever done. It's so steep here and if we continue like this until the summit of the next mountain here. Oh, I'm just trying to take it slow and steady here and don't burn up all of my energy on this hill. I'm closing in on the summit and this was such a grueling climb. Uh, I have a full marathon on my watch, 42 kilometers. So, still have a lot to go until I'm even halfway done with this thing. <sighs> okay, now I'm just trying to focus on getting to one aid station at a time. So, <sighs> looking forward to see Elin again and to drink some sports drink because I'm all out now. Yes! I made it to the top. I figured I gotta start to celebrate the small victories to get some more positive thinking going. And I mean, this mountain isn't that small. <laughs> At this point of the race, I realized that if I wanted to even have a chance of finishing this thing, I needed to start using my mind to my advantage and not the other way around. It was so nice seeing Elin and getting something to eat and drink. <laughs> but uh, to be honest, I feel done. But I have <coughs> said to myself that, that I will at least uh, go to the next aid station, and then from there, I'll try to go to the next aid station. One aid station at a time. I've been running 52 kilometers in nine hours and uh, I'm uh, well into unknown territory. I have never before ran this far and I have never been before been out running for this long and I'm only halfway done. <sighs> I've heard you have these ups and downs in an ultra marathon and uh, right now I've been having a down for like four hours so Hopefully, it will turn around soon. <sighs> That's the next extreme mountain I'm heading up to.
I did for sure not think that climbing the next extreme mountain was the thing that was going to get me feeling a bit better. But somehow climbing up this beautiful mountain peak after 10 hours on my feet felt so extreme that I got some energy back. I guess this was the adventure that I wanted. Although I had slowed down a lot, I was still in 7th position. So knowing that I for the first half of the race managed to stay in this position also finally gave me some positive feelings back. So I made it to this summit after a pretty brutal climb. Such a epic place. I can't believe I just climbed that mountain. It's one of the most extreme mountains I ever climbed, and I did it after running 50 kilometers. Better now. <laughs> How far? Mm, what? 60, <laughs> almost 64. Nice. But I'm worried the course is more than 100. Thank you again, we will lose the race. Look at that. One thing that really kept me going by this part of the race was that I got to meet Elin at the aid stations. That's why it was so tough walking out of the aid station with stiff legs. But at least in my mind I thought that this next section was going to be an easier one. But it would turn out that I was completely wrong about that. This section of the course did not include as much climbing as the previous one, but I quickly found out that that did not mean that it was going to be easy by any means. There was no trail here and the extreme rocky terrain close to the glaciers made it extremely slow. It was tough moving so slowly in this part that I thought was going to be easy. But I just had one thing in mind. Get to the next aid station so we get to meet Elin again. Hello! I hope you guys are having a better time than I am right now. Most probably. Eating grass, taking a chill. That looks nice. You don't want to join me? No, I guess not. It was so nice uh, seeing Ellen again. <laughs> she's so <laughs> she's so kind to me. <sighs> Being physically and mentally broken down after 16 hours, I found myself getting emotional. I thought about how fortunate I am to have so many great people surrounding me that supports me in my dreams and my ambitions no matter how stupid they might seem. It's only 20k left, but the last couple of kilometers hasn't been going that uh, fast. It's been so steep, but now I'm finally getting up to the mountain again. And hopefully it will be more runnable here. Ah. This was such an extreme climb. I would probably have said that many times today, but this whole course is just mountain climbing. Oh. Ah. 
By this point I was determined that I was going to get to that finish line and I wanted to give it my all to keep my 7th place all the way to the finish. But there were still 20 kilometers and some tough mountains standing between me and that dream to finish this race. I can't believe that I'm still moving after, I don't know, 19 hours or something like that. Uh, I thought that was the last summit, but apparently I'm going up to that one as well. Made it to the last summit on the day. It's just a lot of downhill down to that place. The last downhill seemed to never end, and by this point my fatigue and the pain in my toes and my knee was so bad, but I kept running. After a grueling long day, the finish line was so close, so I could almost feel a magnetic field pulling me towards the town square in Stranda. This was it. I knew that I was going to make it. And there was no one to be seen at the mountain, so I knew that it was just a little bit of more pain standing between me and finishing this thing in 7th place. As the sun was going down, I spent some time thinking about the experience I had. Despite the extraordinary nature of this thing, I think by the end it made me more human, more vulnerable and more appreciative of the ordinary. And although I spent almost 20 hours by myself, it made me feel closer to my loved ones. I'm so tired and happy to have finished. Really happy. You <laughs> did happy. amazing. Thanks. Thanks for your help. Mm. Without you, I, uh, yeah, I would never have made it.